Christ and Noel, welcome back to the latest um, closed season Fearless and Devotion with me, Tim. I'm joined by Liam and uh, a slightly um, looking worse for wear, injured Andrew Gilpin. Um, Andy, before we go any further, this episode, as they all are, sponsored by the Fat Boy, you look like you could probably do with a large portion of chicken or some sort of protein down your right now because you look a little bit ghostly. Tell us where you are. And tell us why you have a sort of slightly uh, Spider-Man looking Jeremy Beadle uh, right hand on the go. Uh, okay, well, this is going to be a little bit of unpacking. Uh, I'm in Dusseldorf. I'm here for the Euros. I'm going to the England match tonight. Don't worry, I'm not an England fan. Um, Paddy Power have put on a trip and uh, I was invited on it. Um, and I'm having a great time, apart from breaking my finger last night, <laughs> doing a bar game. <laughs> yeah. Which, which is silly. I mean, I didn't even know at the time because, you know, when you'd have had a few beers, you'd, you, you think it's fine. But then I woke up this morning, it was itching. And I'm like, oh, thanks. And it's like now pretty, pretty big. So, hey, look, if that's the worst thing that happens to me this weekend, um, then uh, I think I've got away scot free. So, yeah. Wow. It's, a, it's a good trip. It's a, they are looking after us. Fair play to Paddy Power. Like the rooms. I can't, I can't, I, I can't yeah. wait for you to. I can't wait for you to clap with the Serbian fans and then forget every given moment and scream out in pain. Um, so how did you do your injury? Oh, uh, it's like a bu- they, they were playing a silly game and I didn't quite get the concept, but you had to like get a beer mat and put your finger through it. And I missed the beer mat. I just put it straight into the table. Um, I mean, everyone laughs. So, you know, at least I, I gave some, I gave, I gave pleasure in my, uh, in my pain. Wow. So like a sort of like pub version of Karate Kid with Mr Miyagi in the ice and all that sort of stuff, but but slightly yeah, more dangerous. Yeah, and I was really shit at it. Um, yeah. and I broke my finger. Um, no, anyway, let's move on. We don't need to. We don't need to laugh at me, do we? Do we? Question. Liam, have you, have you got any unidentified drinking injuries that we need to disclose before we go on? No, I'm I'm all good to be honest. I'm just concerned about Andy going to uh, going to watch England. I was worried that he'd been caught in an incident singing Twelve German Bombers and had his finger pulled back by a bully. Um, there was there was a quite well there wasn't there was a lot of England and uh, Scotland fans mixing in uh, in Dusseldorf last night. And to be honest, it was I it was just a bit of a pang that Wales aren't there because it just reminded me so much of, of Bordeaux. You know, just fans everywhere, just in the pubs, like really taking over. Um, there was a little pang of regret, really, and then and then a pang oh. of pain. Don't worry, you're going to experience it on all of our behalf free. Don't you worry a little pretty head about it. You'll be fine. I'm sure you, yeah. you'll get over that. It should be Wales, mate. It should be Wales. It should be, but it isn't. But I, I'm convinced that this is this story is a front for you having some sort of initiation um, ceremony by some Serbian ultras ahead of today's game. I reckon that's what it is. They try to recruit you into their oh, uh, into oh, sleeper agent. Sal. Yeah. So there we are. Anyway, let's go to, to wreck some stuff, of which there isn't that much, again. <laughs> It's Don't week start the podcast like this. Just say there's oh, loads yeah. of things. But, but the hook is, well, they've got to find something to talk about. Well, we've so got some good stuff to talk, to talk about. So anyway, before we, before we dig down into some uh, interesting uh, minutes from, from a meeting from April, which we can kind of pour through in a bit, let's cut to the uh, documentary. Um, I can't believe it, like season three is finished already. That went super quick. Considering the episodes were longer, that went very very quick. Um, first of all, Liam, what was your take on the latest and final sort of season finale, and your thoughts on the whole of the season? I guess uh, I loved the seeing the celebration scenes all over again from uh, after the Forest Green game. That got me so a bit emotional again. Really enjoyed that. Um, I think I thought it tied things quite nicely together with a lot of the characters that we've seen in this series as well. It all came together nicely at the end with the whole Rocky uh, theme around it. We all love a bit of Rocky, so that was decent. Uh, Parking, yet again, star of the show. Little salute. Be wearing. <laughs> <laughs> like, was that, was that, the thing with him, right, is, so most people would be like, oh, that's obviously, you know, a bet or a dare, but I'm like, quite, quite conceivably, he could have just, decided to that that was what he was going to wear that day in my mind he's I, he's, he's, had that, he's had that in his wardrobe for months and months, <laughs> and months in the hope he could get to wear it in sort of celebration and commiseration um but the series yeah. yeah the series overall was 
really good though i thought um the ep so the strong episodes this season were really strong the ones that i didn't think there was too many weak ones i'd say they were more like there were sort of middling ones to patch things together like the one before um the last episode that i thought that actually built things up ready for this episode really well um i like the length as well like i i don't know if it just me but like the 20 minute episodes or however long they were don't do as much for me as the longer ones it just gives it a bit more time to pull all the different threads together um see so yeah, overall i've really enjoyed this season it was weird just thinking about you know how close things were i was like jesus was that really two two whole months ago now wasn't it that we got <sighs> that we got promoted so yeah it, it works quite well actually having it quite close together i think Andy, what were your your taking it before before I before I just sorry for interjecting? Uh, a few people were um, very complimentary of you on one of your um, quotes, and it wasn't one that was scripted or anything like that, because obviously they inter interspersed some of the podcast, the, the the podcast that we're doing right now. They lifted some of that as well as some of the sort of more scripted stuff. And uh, I think uh, our friend uh, Jay uh, up at Eastside Hawk said quoted your quote. The town is united at the moment. What happened? What's happening at the football club is a catalyst for some things, something a bit bigger. I think we're suddenly becoming the best versions of ourselves because this, for me, is the best thing I've been a part of for a while. So there you go. That was how you felt at the time. It's probably how I feel now, mate. You, I mean, you, uh, you look the best version of yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> With your four fingers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I still feel, I still feel that. I still feel we're part of something, and it's, it's great to even come out here and talk to be uh, talk to people about being a Wrexham fan and actually being really proud of it and everyone's interested and even if they don't like us like I was talking to a Swindon fan last night uh, and he said that would, the fireball was one of his best best away matches he, he loved it loved the atmosphere and I think really and truly how Rob and Ryan sort of deal with the community is, is spurring us on to do better so the likes of Jay is coming in and I know he doesn't like to blow his own trumpet but he's doing a lot of charity work behind the scenes um, you know, we're able to do this pod and give a little bit of money to charity. You know, it's it, the whole sort of town is, is is rallying behind the club, the documentary, and it's really pulling itself up by the bootstraps. And I thought I thought the episode was great. I thought it really sort of it's just so nice that you can have that as a lasting memory of of our promotion. See, uh, see uh, your promotion campaigns because if you think about when we were last promoted, I mean, I can't remember it. Uh, that but I'll always have this now and I'll always be able to go back to it and go I was there I remember that bit Barnett's goal was fantastic um, I think I think this, the, the documentary as a whole has really hit a stride I think it's it doesn't have to world build anymore people know about the game they know about the town they know about the, the characters involved and it's now about putting them together interjecting it with the football with the women's football and the men's football i think they were very lucky how exciting last season was because it had a bit of everything it started badly you know we had peaks and troughs through the season and then they were uh, a shot promotion so you know it's the football allowed allowed a, it, you know to tell a good story on, on its own and you know me and you we're talking last season and maybe we wanted a bit more football. We wanted a bit more behind the scenes. Well, we've got that now. We've had that with that last last season. And I hope it's really, I hope that's a template for it to go to go forward. The one I thing I'll say is I do wonder where they're going to go next with it. Because if we have, if we have a sort of mediocre or, you know, a mid table season, can you keep the excitement up with football alone? Um, I, I'd like to. I'd like to hope so because I think this is the best way to do it. But it might not work. Um, I'd also like to keep to keep the, the proximity uh, the same. So you know they're they're sort of coming out with episodes while the season's going on because I think that really builds up to up to it. I think the only sort of downside now is this seems to going to be there's going to be like a fallow period, isn't it? Where there's going to be no documentary and no football, um, and that's hard if you're doing something like a newsletter. But uh, <laughs> But by the newsletter, please. Um, um, yeah, put, put the link in if you would, Tim. But, you know, it, it just seems to be a fallow period. And maybe we do need that. Maybe we do need a bit of a break from football before we sort of make the signings, uh, get back in pre-season, look ahead towards the uh, towards the Canada trip uh, and, you know, sort of gear up again. 
Yeah, um, I think maybe part of it was, I know that a lot of it was guided by how, how the lads did on the pitch. It almost feels there was some element of being quite deliberate in that the first season would set up your characters, so to speak, the people, the place. Almost like the football club was like the secondary part in all this. The people, the place, and the reasons why we're here. And that we know nothing, and then that's, that's the hook. Like, oh, they know nothing, this is going to fall flat on their face. Then the second one was like, okay, this is more about the club and the kind of the sort of characters kind of blended into it a bit more, um, as opposed to being front front and center. And this time, like I said, it's it's been largely action. And so it should. You're back in the league for the first time and 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 getting out at the first attempt. And I just think you're right in what you're saying is that there's gonna be hard times ahead, whether in the next five years, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever. But we're always going to have this forever. It's always going to be there for everybody to watch. You know, I don't think it's ever going to be taken off. You know, never to be seen again. So you, when there's low low moments, I'm going to go back to that and try and g myself up. And that episode, the finale, was the ultimate kind of feel good episode. It was everything. It was like, I mean, that little montage at the end about people coming through personal trauma with you know Scoot. And Lily Jones and, and and everybody else and and uh, Millie, yeah, and and James Jones and, and all that sort of stuff and it was just the way it was seamlessly put together and it was well edited, and, wasn't it? It was well edited. It was, and and, and even though and I, I know Sean Harvey still has his detractors and and, and there's there's a, a large element of caution amongst us still, you know, understandably or otherwise. Even he kind of like it was like I can't believe Sean Harvey's given kind of like a a rallying cry to say, well, yeah, the plan is to do it back to back to back. Why wouldn't it be? You know, if we said it wasn't going to be possible, then why the why would people tune in? Mm-hmm. You know, you have to have that. So I thought it was really well put together. So a massive kudos to everybody involved, um, the producers, everybody, script writers, yeah, cameras. Just on that, everybody. mate. Just on that, mate. We've got one of the producers coming on next next week to talk about the show. Uh great. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that because uh, I think Josh Jesco came on last last uh, last season, didn't he? And really sort of put everything in context. We've got Jeff Looney coming in um, this time, and apparently, and I've been told he's a prodigious talker. He will not shut up. So he's okay. more, more or less going to interview himself. I think <laughs> great, great news for us. We don't um, need to ask him for questions, then we can just let him do his own thing. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, you find it interesting how little Ryan and Rob are in it. Uh, and how how they're sort of, and I, and I don't think it's because they want to to sort of limit themselves to to the documentary. I just think it it fits a narrative structure now to have those two sitting on a chair and sort of like throw a few zingers in and just sort of give a bit more sort of context to the to the decisions. It, what I'm trying to say is that every every episode doesn't need ten minutes of Ryan and Rob. No, um, I, 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 and then there was a I saw a review in the New York Times that said, "Well, it was a little bit indulgent to the sponsors because I think they had the the." It the, is. The it is. But, but, but we say that, but then you get you get you get sponsors that come on board. You think, well, if they're going to get a couple of minutes airtime for sponsoring, then so be it. Because you know, Rob and Ryan, they they know they're not fully, they're not football administrators per se, but they are very good actors. They're very good marketeers, and guess what? They know how to get sponsors on board and they know how to keep the sponsors happy. So we just saw a bit of an insight in, into that. And the, the laughable hook around that was Rob missing Holly Palmer's yeah, yeah. uh, equaliser against Stockport. <laughs> We've all been there. When was the last time you, you missed a goal at a oh, game? Uh, well, the good thing about Maidenhead was you were able to go for a piss and still see the goal. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> once having a, I was once having a wee and Jordan Maguire drew twatted it in from 25 yards. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, uh. <laughs> it was Stockport. You know, when we won in the league against uh, Stockport, not this season, but the one before, 3-0, uh, I missed two goals because the mold Road stand underneath, I went to get some food and it just took forever. I mean, there was good celebrations underneath, fair play, but and it was on the telly, so you could see it. But yeah, I haven't. I've tried not to go for food in the Mold Road stand ever since because I was annoyed. What about you, Tim? Oh, I think it was something. It was something really crap, like one of those classics where oh, maybe I'm, I'm getting confused with, with uh, uh, Scarfy. God rest his soul. I think we went to Torquay away, and we only won one nil on a Tuesday night. And he missed it. <laughs> so he went all that way there and back, missed the goal. 
Uh, I can't think what, I, what I've missed. I tend to try and time it quite well, to be honest. I'm not the sort of person that absolutely leaves before, you know. I've you know, never leaved before. Time, full, no. Yeah, half time, full time. But I can't remember. I'm sure there's been one. And when it's happy, you know, you're there. You're, you're having a nice quiet leak. And then you hear the roar. You're thinking, fuck, bollocks, shit. And then you kind of quick drip dry, run back, run into the concourse. Like, ah, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I didn't really. It's, I'm I, I know it. the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> Um, just before we move on to the bits, um, I, I kind of felt a little bit sorry for Rob and Ryan when they decided, consciously or otherwise, to kind of not come over for that that promotion clinch against Forest Green. I know they said that the, kind of the odds were stacked, but were they really that stacked? I, I looked at it and thought, could very well be possible. Mansfield are doing well. Barrow are like, mm, neither. I do wonder if it was more their personal schedule. Like, where it was Ryan, he looked like he was on some sort of. Yeah. I think he was that was Deadpool. I think Sean yeah. Sean is it Michaels, is it the uh, the director? Um the wrestler. Yeah, Sean Michaels, sweet chin music. Sorry. Um my wrestling uh, geek coming out there. Um, point, point Sean Levy. Sorry, Sean Levy. Sean Levy, yeah. Point point being, um have there been any games that you've missed like, through illness, through Double booking somewhere you've been away. They thought, "Oh my god, I'm so gutted I missed out on that." There's got to be a couple. Yeah, I mean, one one for me was Arsenal. Um, I didn't oh, go. Yeah, no, no way. Yeah, I was just about old enough that I could have gone, um, and I, I think I, I just I just didn't get a ticket. I mean, and and I was listening to it in the car, going, "Oh, we beat Arsenal. It's probably the greatest moment." I'll ever have as a Wrexham fan and I'm sitting in the car. <laughs> so yeah, that that's the big pang of pang, pang of regret. But you know, um a lot of Wrexham fans retrofit the fact that they were there. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like uh, you know, everyone was at, at Wembley for 66 and things like that, and everyone was this in Istanbul <laughs> for, for Liverpool. So let's just say I was there. Yeah. The Middles it was Middlesbrough for me in ninety-seven, um, the FA Cup win. Um my mum was still at the stage where she said I was too young to go. She was always afraid of letting me go to to wreck some games that age. So, yeah, my mate had offered me a ticket, I think, but I missed out on it. Uh, and more recently, I missed out on the Robin Ryan when they did their first press conference. I was going <coughs> to be there, but I missed out because I had hand, foot, and mouth off the lad. So, yeah, thanks for did that. You had foot and mouth. Hand, wow. foot, hand, foot, and mouth. I don't know what it was, but I had my face was like covered in scabs and God knows what else. I was like, am I bollocks going to this while I'm looking like that? Yeah. And he's got the hand. He just needs the foot and mouth. Now <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see what happens tonight. I mean, I'm sure an England fan might uh, might give me that. Like, yes, but I am dressed in my cricket jumper, so I do look. Oh wow, good. the classic, the classic. Um, I think mine was Northampton away. We got promoted ninety two, ninety three. My yeah. dad let me go as midweek, sort of school night, wasn't it? So yeah. listen to it on BBC Wales joyously. And then more recently, I shared this moment with you, Andy. It was when we um, we were both watching the Stockport FA Trophy match on the stream. I couldn't go because I had COVID. Um, yeah. And Mullin chips that goal in. I think we both both disappeared off screen doing sort of crazy jigs in our respective living rooms. So yeah. that was the, the big regret for me was missing that one. But ultimately, it didn't matter with the final, but it still would have been nice to be there. But there we are. Anyway, moving on. Um we have a few bits and bobs from the um, club advisory board meeting, which was held in April, April 25th. Various people in attendance, Sean, Harvey, Flo Robinson, um, some fan representation as well. Um, so, yeah, just, Liam, take us through this because there's some, there's some specific talking points which have raised some eyebrows and... and not raise so many in other quarters, depending on, on what you thought was going to happen with the documentary and then the sort of financial repercussions that would have on the club. Yeah, I'll sort of I'll skirt through some bits that we know more about. I mean, there's bits about season ticket and match day prices, the fact that the match day prices are going up by two quid per ticket. Um, Sean Harvey welcomed comments and there were no objections. Um, membership, this is I think this raised a few eyebrows so. People thought that membership was value for money, apparently. I mean, the thing I would say about Minutes is it's a very abridged version of what actually happened. I would, would you say that's the consensus with people you know? Because 
I mean, a lot of people have basically said you're paying money to enter a, a massive lottery, basically, and they they question um, the value for money. And you know, with there being an increase as well, it's just I don't know. I how feel, I feel sorry for membership uh, holders. I do because you know, even if this loyalty scheme, loyalty scheme does come to pass, it's going to be very hard to get to get tickets. Um, I think um, I don't think. It's great value for money, but to be honest, it's what every club does. Um, you know, you want to have someone on board where you've got their data, you can sell direct to them, you're getting like a subscription from them um, each, each month, and it's how a club will 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 develop. And I think even though, you know, personally as a fan, I'm, I'm not a huge I'm a supporter of it. I, I see it's necessary, and I think it's the way that we, we have to grow this club. So a necessary evil, unfortunately. Yeah. There's a bit more detail in terms of the loyalty scheme. Um, do we know that it would be collected over a five-season period? I'm, I'm trying to think if we, we'd had that detail before on it. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. I think that was that that came out when when the leak uh, yeah. happened. Um, um, so yeah, a question was raised about whether supporters would be able to collect points merely for applying for tickets, even if they're not successful. I think that was firmly shunned, and also. Why would you really just for, for I'm not being funny, but just for trying for a ticket as opposed to actually attending a game? So that's quite understandable. This one, would the club consider placing a canopy over the ticket window? Um, the club are not currently considering putting a canopy over the window. And Fleur Robinson, who is still at the club, said the club will be discouraging walk-up purchases on non-match days because I think there was concerns about the number of people who were actually just rocking up when um, tickets go on sale and pretty much being guaranteed just by virtue of being there? Look, there is another part to this, though. I mean, a lot of people do do have to collect tickets, and we're still not at the stage where tickets are printed print at home uh, and shown on your phone. And I, I, I think that's, um, especially for me, because I can be a bit selfish about this, it's really hard for me to get tickets, so I have to send my dad and my dad knows the girl at the ticket office like really well now. I think that I think they're pretty they're pretty big pals. But she he has to go he has to go like four or five different emails of, of memberships and season tickets, and then he has to go and say right this is this one and this is this one, and then she's confused. I'm, and then there's a phone call to me, uh, and and I try and make sense of it. And my dad could do with a canopy over him as he <laughs> as he sorts all that this out. Is there is still something to be said for the human interaction as well, isn't there? You know, having that human interface when you're booking tickets. So if, you know, she's things... She's lovely as well, the girl on the phone. Uh, when I talk know. to her, she's she's brilliant. Like, she really helped us out. So, yeah. Yeah, there's something to be said for customer service, isn't there? I think is the counterpoint um, to that, I guess. Um, bits about system for players to be guests at supporters clubs. Um, new head of community is going to be responsible for a strategy for that. To be honest, I get the impression, though, that... Tim, obviously, you have a lot to do with Wurzel Reds. It strikes me that they get a decent amount of, you know, people from the club, and there's not a great deal of issues there. I don't think, are there? No, and I think I think it's it's largely you got to factor into geographical location and all that sort of stuff, you know, because if if a player is uh, finishing their training off and then they're going home and it's an hour there, they're not going to be travelling an hour back or what, wherever they're from. So they have to kind of be a little bit realistic, I suppose. But then. You know, we've had the likes of Max. He kind of lives over towards sort of Frodsham way, I think. So, so uh, I, 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 I really hope that it continues, and I really hope everybody gets a fair crack of the whip. All, all the the various supporters groups and clubs, because it is important. It is important. It's all very well. You got, you know, you got the kids and, and their parents that wait for the players before and after games, and they get that sort of interaction there, which is great and rightfully so. Um, but then you got like maybe the sort of like the older guard or even people our age and, and, and upwards who maybe don't have. You'd, you'd, I'd feel a bit awkward if I was going to meet the players and I'd, I'd get in the way of some young kid that want to meet meet the players and I've had my time. So it's somebody else's turn. So yeah, to have that buy in at, at these events where they come along and we had Jordan not long ago. He spoke very very candidly, um, <laughs> maybe too candidly at times, um, but obviously frustration from from him with the, the season he's had. And I, yeah, like I said, I just hope whoever comes in understands the importance of that, um, because the last thing you want to do, and it was always my big my big fear of climbing these leagues, ah. is when you, you see it happening elsewhere, where the gap between the fan 
and the players that we that we worship, the ground that they walk on, becomes greater. And therefore, there's this divide that shouldn't exist because ultimately they love playing for the club. You want them to come across and show that they love playing for the club and tell you that they love playing for the club. And it's nice to hear it in person, you know, and it shows that they're making an effort and goes hand in hand with the whole community values aspect. So hopefully it continue. Um, that's my pitch to kind of under underline how important it is. So we'll see. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so then... Another thing I think that anyone's been who's been in the Wrexham Lager stand will appreciate is that the bogs are absolutely appalling. Um, so someone's requested if they could be improved. They've said there's no space to extend the facilities because space is limited, but it'd be addressed as part of the COP development. More on that to come. So maybe we'll just tap into that in a minute. Yeah. Um, another sort of big, I think this is one that's, I think it's been said before, but it, it still raises a bit of eyebrows. I mean, I'm interested to hear what you two think. Does the club get a fee per episode for each series of Welcome to Wrexham? Sean Harvey confirmed the club does not gain any direct financial benefit from the series, but what it does get is a marketing platform to increase the value of sponsorship and greater exposure of the club. Now, my thing about that personally is I, I get what where they're coming from in terms of the marketing platform. I think that's the huge benefit for the club. But you know when they place the emphasis on, you know, this isn't our story, this is Wrexham's story. So if, if I'm thinking about it on a very basic level, the one thing that I do think about that is like, it's our story, but we don't directly benefit from it. But then maybe the, the sponsorships is where that comes in. It's a very clever way to do it, isn't it? In many ways, it's quite cheap TV because the people who are in it I, they're not taking great fees for this. They just want to be in it. And I can completely understand that. I mean, we want to be in it because it's, it's a piece of history and we're delighted to, to, to do it. Um, so, you know, for how much they probably get paid per episode, I think, I think it's probably a pretty good deal. Look, I completely understand that, that this underpinned the whole Ryan and Rob takeover and they knew this was going to happen and they knew this was a good money spinner. And it made them worth, you know, it, it, it's made everything worthwhile. And I can never sort of go against the ownership model because it is really unique. And it's probably the only the only way this happens in the whole world. And at the end of the day, we've had two promotions from it. It would be churlish of me to sit there and go, oh, I want more from them. No, I mean, you've done, you've done enough. I mean, the only sort of thing I am thinking is there is still this loan, which we are still being charged interest on. Um, is there, was there, is there any way that, Maybe the interest can be paid off by 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 the doc. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm being greedy, uh, and I don't know the whole thing of how the finances work behind the scenes. Um, and I, as as a lot of people have come on, and Kevin uh, Kieran McGuire has come on a few times and said, look, loans like this aren't unusual, uh, and you have to inject capital to build the cop. Um, so, yeah, I, I think. I think, yes, I would like more from the documentary, but I understand why we don't get it. And I think it's probably it's probably still a great deal for us. Yeah. I think the proof of being the pudding, wasn't it? I mean, the proof of the pudding on this occasion being the end of season accounts, um, you know, the next lot we are going to see the impact of the sponsorship, what money's been put in. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of capital that has raised. Um I, I was a, I was a little bit like, well, really? So, so they, but then I, I, you kind of ba balance that with, well, they wanted to make a documentary. They've done a pretty good job of it. Done a very good job of it, to be fair. We've from that benefited from sponsorship, tours, insanely lucrative shirt deals, of which I'm still hopeful that's going to be even more lucrative because you'd like to think there's got to be some sort of tie up with, with the US. Um, distributor out there has to be surely um, maybe that's why it's taking a little bit longer on the kit stuff but um, yeah interest yeah, it's, it's interest isn't it because that, without that documentary you don't get fans like I don't know maybe not Jay maybe not that Wayne maybe not some of the other good people we've met on this mm -hmm. journey who are being brought in to loving this club through the documentary that's the real sort of charm of it um, and I think that's the sort of good thing we, we, we take away from that. Um, but you are right. If we're, if we're losing another six million 
again next season. Yeah. Uh, and the, the documentary is still really popular and still bringing in a lot of cash for from from the likes of Disney and Hula. Yeah, would... I, th- I, th- I think you you weigh it up, don't you? you go right. Is is that lump sum much better in the clubs? We see longer term aspect of that growth and putting the club's name out there globally. You know, so that that's where you can. Long I think. I think you're absolutely stuff right. like that yeah. is in you can't buy that you can't buy that you can't put a price on that so no you're right, you're right anyway no. um yeah um from the documentary gone a few more bits and um, i think it's worth remembering as well as we go through this so this, this is in april just to put in context that this meeting was held so one of the issues at the time was does the club have any position on the scrapping of fa cup replays it's quite famously a lot of football clubs on Twitter posted various bits and bobs saying they're against it. The answer is a bit of a fudge. It says the club believes the FA will be revisiting the proposal, which is welcome. I mean, I'd, has that been has that line been out there anywhere in terms? No, of... it hasn't. But if anyone's going to know about it, it's Sean Harvey. Yeah, yeah. So um, I would, I, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of U turn for the. Yeah. Uh, because you know the lower clubs need this cash, and we are still, you know, we're still a lower league club. Yeah. We need that. We need that cash. And some of the best de- days we've had are like you know, remember the Sheffield United and things like that. You know, the replays are just as good. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they. definitely. Yeah. Um, so the club not really <laughs> taking a position on that. Um, so again, this is April. Any further information on the cop? More information will be provided within the next month. Within the next month being May. Uh, when are we now? <laughs> We're mid-June. Um, still nothing. I, I think we all know that that tech restand will be up next season. Yeah, we, absolutely. We all know yeah. That. And, it, and it will make money for the club that it is. Um, it would I, just I be think... nice to have some update, though. I mean, I mean, I, I was going to say, I know the question's been asked. I mean, I've asked the question uh, as a member of the press. Is there any update? I know other people have. I don't think is there anything behind the scenes, mate? Are Rex and Council sort of saying, well, we've we've had something new from the club or they're, they're... there's a different planning going in and you know, maybe they are thinking, right, the couple we had was good, but so much is so much you know, the club is on a, a, a high, there's we could get even more people in, so let's expand the cop again and maybe that means a, another round of planning. I'd love to say yes, but the my understanding is that the council is still essentially in the dark, waiting there for the club to basically sign the financial agreement. Well, when do um, these run out, mate? Because these grants aren't about forever, are they? They're not, but I don't, I don't want to say rules have been bent for the club, but basically they've been very sort of relaxed with the club in that I do wonder if this was another organisation which wasn't currently bringing global attention to Wrexham, would you be as patient with them? I don't know, to be honest. I mean, I haven't heard anything to the effect that there's an impending deadline where the money's going to be taken away, but the longer time goes on, you're talking about 17, 18 million of money, which is meant to originally be to improve Wrexham General Station, which I think you could strongly argue that there is a need for that. So are you going to sit on it forever? Probably not. No, you need the work to start. As a as yeah. a council, you need that work to start. Well, someone made this point to me this week that if it, we'd had the levelling up cash, there are very, very strict deadlines on when that had to be used by. So you definitely wouldn't have been able to sit on that. That had to be spades in the ground by X date, very strict terms. I mean, there's lots of terms around the, the COP development, but in terms of actually timelines for it starting, I haven't seen any sort of, you must do it by this time. But it, it would just be nice just just to get something, even if it's a placeholder type of update, you know what I mean? Just to say, you know, we are still planning to go ahead with this details surrounding, I don't know, finances. That's that's my take on what the, the holdup is because uh, there's still money to be found from the club's perspective. Like, I'm not asking for chapter and verse, but just something to give us a... Because I think, I'm trying to think, when did we have the last update now? It's been a while. Like I, th- I feel like Humphreys maybe said something informally in yeah. between, but there hasn't been a proper club communication in quite some time now. Even yeah. stuff like the pitch this summer, you know, there was various rumours. Um, and then literally all we've had is a picture of the grass being done with like an emoji. 
above it. <laughs> so I don't even know what's being done to the pitch. But yeah, I know. Is there under soil heating, or is that something that they're going to look at again? These runoff yeah. areas for 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 international yeah. standards. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. I, I I get you. I get you. But you know, but this is where the the fans forum is where these these questions have to be asked. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a couple of other outstanding issues, which, again, given it was April, will the corporate season ticket be the same price? This will be shared in due course. Now, I know someone who's a corporate season ticket holder, and as far as I'm aware, they're still not still not being told in, in June how much they're going to be paying um, for next season. Um, any news on the new kit announcement? There's no dates yet, but you'd expect these in the not-too-distant future. Um, I... I, I I'd be surprised if it's not next week, to be honest. I mean, sorry, this this coming week as we are. Uh, You've just finished on. the documentary, right? Yeah. To hold the interest, you need the kids out pretty yeah. soon. Um, so that's sort of the the any other business that was raised. So quite a few issues that are just lingering on. I mean, I'm not going to beat the arse out of it, but there has been a few people saying this week about you know communication issues and that sort of thing. I, it's been very, very quiet. Mm, yes. Um, kit news. I've, I've had a couple of people get in touch to say, I've had it on good authority. I was like, okay. So we'll go with it just because we were, well, they haven't thrown us anything, have they, the club? So so let's just go with it. So apparently, the as is the done thing these days, of which many, many clubs are doing it, it seems to be that the red shirt is going to be a throwback to one of the old... Marston's Ales sponsored kits, which were made by nice. ENS at the time. Um, so you're looking at early 90s, late 80s, early 90s kits there. So I've been Love told that. that new first year is vintage Rexham with white collars. Um, so we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, and the second one is black and white diamonds. Now, that's very left field. Um, but then, you know, some people like traditional stuff, but then if it hasn't been done before, you do something new to keep people's interest. So, and the fact that we just had a black kit, we starved for a black kit for so long. Why not go with a, another variation of a black kit? So that so there there is supposedely something there. There's I mean an iron as to whether it be Macron again. My understanding or what I've been told is they're still going to be loyal to Macron for a further season. Um, because there's been rumours of being Castor. Castor, did some digging into Castor. Didn't realise that they were they were based Manchester. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah two brothers. Two brothers, but what, yeah. what, One of the guys was rejected by Tran, Tranmere Rovers as a kid. Um, right. So that kind of spurred him on, and now he's uh, a multi-millionaire with, uh, with this sports brand. So that's... You know how I feel about black and white diamonds, you know? Is it... Well, uh, is it going to be sublimated? Well? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Or is it, is it I mean, to appeal to the mods? I don't know. Um, somebody sent me this. I, I, was like, I hope it's nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, that's pretty, pretty garish. I mean, the, the, the I wasn't feeling ill before. I, I am now. But that, that's made by ASICs, so that can't be right. Anyway, right. so, um, yeah, so that that's the kind of the, the kit rumour stuff. Um, pretty much everything is, is very conjecture on here at the moment because we've got nothing <laughs> solid to tell you. Um, we haven't got any new players in, so spare Is there any thought. transfer yeah. stuff, Liam? There, there's no move it, move it. You hold so hold the music because uh what Wonder Boy messaged me and said, uh, oh, I'm going on holiday. So there's no I'm th I'm thinking of sacking him to be honest. He's uh he's, he's getting slack. Nice. Yeah, he's he's we need a new one. He's he's getting terrible, he's getting slack. Uh, Wonder Boy. A, we, <laughs> yeah, like that one. Um so yeah, there's been a couple of names thrown around bit of a I'd call it a dad's army sort of target list uh, this week we've had Eric Peters yeah. um, who is currently at West Brom obviously got a hell of a lot of experience in his career played at Stoke and the likes uh, I think he's now 35 though what do we think of that one I mean if you're going to solve the left wing back problem by replacing him with an even older Left wing back. Uh, look, Parky always brings in a bit of experience each each season. I think he likes that sort of mix. He likes a good pro to come in and really sort of uh, help help the rest of the guys. Um, it's a very much of a James McLean sort of signing. I think he can play on the left, but he probably is more suited or has played more for West Brom in in midfield. Um, I, you know, he's playing. He's been playing Championship football. 
um, which ha- he, he, might, he might be coming to the end of his career, but is he going to play every game? Probably not. But to have a, a Dutch international um, in, in our ranks, um, well, we, we've had worse. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Um, but, you know, if you are looking for an experienced player, do you think we could maybe do a little bit better? I'm, Tim, I mean, I'm, I'm doing down a, a 20 cap Dutch international here who's played in the <laughs> Premier League. I mean, yeah, but it's, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But then, you know, you, you kind of, you get certain, you get certain people who, who are the exceptions to the rule. James McLean is the prime example of that. He's arguably one of the fittest players at the club. We see that, you know, on his Insta. Um, and it he was a solid addition for us. Then you got like Stephen Fletcher, who kind of become a bit of a cult hero. He hasn't signed on the dotted line yet. We know he was offered the deal, wasn't he? But he hasn't signed on yet, which kind of leads me to believe he's probably not going to. Because I think if the club were going to throw us any sort of bone over any sort of news, they would have said, look, Steve, just say you're going to sign so we can bung it out and kind of like just, you know, sort of calm down the discontent of there being no news. So that said, he probably would have scored ahead of Shea Adams for Scotland um, against Germany the other day. So... Uh, yeah, I, ju- I just think, yeah, we need a bit of experience to, to replace the, the vast experience that's left. However, I do think for this division, we need to be a bit more savvy. We need to be we need to be a quicker team. We're, we've been a physical team, but have we necessarily been a fast team? No, no, no we, we lack pace everywhere, mate. Yeah, we, need, we need pace. Pace, I think, you know, it's been a long time since we've been in League One, but I would suggest that pace is a key, key factor in League One and about how you go with it go about your business so key key but you know our last signing our first summer signing last year was mid-July that was Will Boyle but then Cy Cook I saw him yesterday kindly pointed out to me that didn't the National League season finish earlier than the League 2 season it did it was a couple of weeks early so so realistically we should be looking again kits and players by the time we record our next pod in seven days' time, <laughs> please, it's going to pop that out there. Give us something. <laughs> Come on, give us an exclusive one. Throw me a bone. Yeah, I mean, we can do that next week. You know, we're laughing then because we we can discuss the um, the fixtures. The fixtures are out week on Wednesday. You know, so we've got plenty to discuss. But we want something before then. We need something before then because this is a trying time. For every Wrexham fan, <laughs> how are you going to do next season? Don't know. We haven't got any players in. Don't even know what kit they're going to be wearing. So Rob McElhenney was in town, wasn't he? Um, quite a quiet, low key visit, but hopefully, I think he said at, after the Phillies game, um, the one that Andy was at, that um, he was going to be speaking to Parky this week about tra- you know what the plan was for transfers um, this summer. So maybe that'll get things moving a bit. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, um, I think we've covered everything that needs to be covered. Um, going back to the Euros, obviously, distinct lack of Welsh involvement this year, thanks to a certain Robert Page and his uh, tactical masterclass. There we are. I'm going to start on that again. <laughs> um, I used to love Robert Page, but I don't now. For obvious reasons. There we are. I, I think he's got to go, mate. I do. I, it, I well, yeah. It, the, heart, it, the longer this carries on, the worse it is for Wales. Exactly. Steve Cooper and Oshin Roberts are two prime candidates for st- stepping into that breach. But there yeah. we go. I digress. Um, so, yeah. Serbia, England. We've seen a bit of the Euro so far. You know, we're on we're on day three today. Who, we, know, we didn't really discuss it last week. We should have done, but we didn't. So let's catch up now. Who is your, who are you plumping for? for the winners of this tournament? Um, I think home advantage will really suit Germany. And I think they've got a pretty decent decent squad. Um, and I was surprised how, you know, I wasn't surprised how bad Scotland were, but I think they were made to look bad by a, a very good German team who absolutely got their tactics spot on. Um, so I, I would, I think Germany will be strong. Uh, you can't count the Italians. Even when they go behind, they they got back it. You know they will grind out victories. They grind out victories. One thing though, England. I mean, they struggled in a little bit in central defence, but the rest of the components of that team look pretty good. You take defence away from it, and that's a good. That's a good like. That's a good midfield and attack. Um, 
you know, you've got the, the best player in Germany, the best player in Spain, and you've got the best player in England. Um, and they're the three top, top leagues. Yeah. You're just saying this now as an insurance policy where you get cornered by a bunch of England fans. But we go, look, it's on the pod. I'm backing you. I'm backing you, honest. De- Dean Keats would say that you can't take a good defence away from it. You know, attack begins in defence. Um, yeah, but sometimes, look, if you think, yeah, okay, there's no stars in centre-half centre apart from, you know, so you've got Stones, you maybe got that, uh, the Crystal Palace lad, is it gay, is it? And then they've got, um, they've got Lewis Dunk, right? So... If you think of teams that win champion uh, win tournaments, they don't all have to be 11, 11 stars. Sometimes you need a player in who who does like the donkey work or does who isn't the, the massive star, doesn't want the whole sort of thing, just gets on with his job. <sighs> Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if they if they did really well. I think they'll get to the final. Right. So that's, that's that's Andy getting St George's cross tattooed on his four remaining knuckles. Uh, Liam, who are you pumping for? I can't believe Andy, you've just gone for England, but there we are. We'll, we'll... I, I, I did some in for work where I went for Germany because I was surprised, like looking at the bookies' favourites list to see England top and Germany something like third. It's not like they've not got decent players coming through. Um, looked really decent in um, the opening game. Jam- um, Messiah was my uh, pick to be the star. Of the tournament, and he started really well as well. Um, England, your messiah. yeah, he's my messiah. <laughs> I think that's how yeah, you pronounce right. his name. Um, yeah. but um, England, the thing with England for me, right, is it's just a mentality thing because, like, you know, every year it's built up, and you know, there's this golden generation, and I just think not winning things becomes this, you know. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, and, and I mean, we had it, mate. We had it. Remember when we couldn't get out of the conference? It was like there was there was not a rotten heart to the team, but it, it was there was something within the team that that wouldn't wouldn't let us <laughs> get promotion. And whatever the manager or or, or the team happened, it, it, I mean, it, it just didn't. It, we just didn't seem to believe. And I, yeah, yeah, I do sort of get that. And maybe that's why I say I think they'll get to the final. Um, I'm not sure if they'll win it, but. If you fluke one, well, yeah, I was going to say the thing with that is that a bit like us and you know waiting for buses and then back to back promotions come along. I think if and when they do finally win a tournament, um, you know they could go on to to win another in quick succession. But yeah, just that thing. We, I, I I back them to be the ones who who didn't perform to expectations because I I still find it mad that they're. Their favourites, not from the point of view of talent in the squad. You know, look, it's absolutely rammed with talent, but yeah, they've just got to they've just got to break that mentality. Um, England, big losers, right? Yeah. Um, Tim, let's wrap this up. Who do you think? Uh, oof, I'm going to go with the the obvious rare Wrexham link that I can think of at the current Euros, which would be Dan Backman and goal for Austria. Austria dark horses. Go for Austria transform. The, the, the dark horses never said I'm going for them. So the, dark, the dark horses since what Greece were in 2004. Yeah, um, the Euros always someone weird wins it. You've got you've yeah, had I just think, winning it. You've had that, Greece, Portugal. R- Ralph Rannick have kind of R- Ralph Rannick has, has kind of transformed them. So I think they could be dark horses. I'm I'm only going to go for Belgium on the basis that they got the coolest away kit. Uh, which is based on Tintin, and I bought it, so it's ace. So um, they're not; they're probably not going to do it because the defense is suspect. But look, it's, it, you know, it's three days in; it's been entertaining so far. Goals galore. So you know, if if there was ever a void to be filled um, during this off season, then then this is probably doing the trick for us all. I think so. Um, do you remember Wrexham's only German player, Andy? I put a tweet out about him the other day on uh, an X. Whatever you want to say. Hacky was his. Star name? defense witness as well yeah. as the uh, <laughs> <was that? laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah. it's so James weird, isn't it? Hurst. I mean, <laughs> James Hurst he was called as a witness and James Hurst um, drink drive yeah. and urinating in public trial. It's mental, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Dean, Dean Keats offered him a deal, non contract terms after a couple of weeks trial. Played against Harrogate in the FA Trophy. We, we lost. He hit the bar. And that was it. He was never to be seen again. What do you mean by hit the bar? I mean, did him and not, Jim... Not that bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not the bar Hurst he was at. <laughs> right. to, tie, uh, to tie this up, yeah. can I first say thank you for all the people who got in touch to help me with the Vancouver 
hotel. You, you're all, all all brilliant, and I've, I've managed to sort something. So I'm really thankful. Where are you staying, Andy? Uh, I'm looks like I've got a, a downtown hotel, um, but yeah, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, and also please, yeah, the newsletter is, I think it's going from strength to strength. It's, it's decent, Tim, if you could pop a, pop a, a link in, it's 15 pounds for the year. And I think it's really good value. Uh, and there was a special guest columnist this week, uh, certainly Mr. Liam Randalls. And thanks for your help on that, mate. It's all right. Cool. I've got about 16 messages from Paddy Power saying, where are you? <laughs> so I'm going to Are you going to be part of some publicity stunt for Paddy Power? You're going to dry up? dress up as like a knight or something oh yeah that would be great i'm gonna i'd definitely do that yeah it's not stereotypical at all I'm, i'd love that right okay so i'm gonna have to go uh but thanks as ever guys and uh, we'll see you next week look after your knuckles sonic and we'll see yeah. you next week cheers, cheers everyone break a finger cheers. all the best until next week <laughs>